Good morning, YouTubers, and welcome once again to the Southern Wing here at the Stink Bug Works. I'm still in the middle of projects here, but I watched Big B's video. Now, Big B's building a prototype of uh, the tunnel jet here, and he's at the point of building the canopy. Now, I see he's carved the whole thing out of a block of styrofoam, better known as expanded polystyrene, or EPS. Now, that's the, the common foam everybody's seen, and there are two kinds of foam. There are expanded foams like this. This is referred to as open cell because you can see it's just a whole bunch of little balls, foam balls glued together in a matter that make this thing. And how they do it is they have a mold and they have these little little tiny balls and they put these little tiny balls in the mold and they shoot steam in there and the little tiny balls go and it fills up all, well, most of the spaces. You see, there's some spaces in here. And then you have the closed cell foam like this. Now, this is insulation foam you get at Home Depot and the like. And this is, it's like your poor foam. You know, the foam fizzes and fills the space in the mold. This stuff is much easier to sand. It sands smoothly. As you're sanding this stuff, little balls want to come off and chunks and such and it doesn't sand very well, so it's kind of hard to shape. Now this stuff cuts with a hot wire real good. I've cut this with a bandsaw, and you see it cuts real nice with a bandsaw as well. But sanding it, it just doesn't work that good. And one of the problems, now, now let me talk about the design for a minute. The design of this thing is mostly straight lines and circular sections, arcs. There's nothing fancy in here. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. So what happens is you have, hello, this cowl section, and Big B's built a foam block to go over that includes the nose piece. And I think he's going to have problems getting everything to fit. Here's the way I did it. I first glued a foam block to this nose thing and sanded it with the sides vertical all the way to fit. And this is it here. And at least that tall. And that was a separate piece. And then I made the shoebox lid that went on top of everything with the gap here for the motor and left these sticking out. And what happens is this nose block that I just carved out of, hello, where is it? <laughs> this nose block that I just carved, carved right here I'll put up right against here, and it'll fit in there. And then I do a little more shaping, a little more shaping, and I start getting this angle and curve going here. And all the time I'm sanding with a flat sanding block because my end goal will be that once this thing's in here, my little thing here that I made, I'm going to take these top stringers, which I left long, and I'm going to glue them to the foam. And then I'll put this little bit on the box here that stays with the hull, and I'll add a piece of balsa that I tape real well to here that wraps around there and butts up against here. So it's it's all continuous. It's real easy to do. You just have to pre-plan the shaping of this. Now you'll have the nose section 
and the wood strips up to here, then I go ahead and glue on the top foam and shape it. Um, I, in the kits, I'm going to include this little piece back here, and you put some sheeting on it, and that gives you a good tape joint. Big B might be putting a split line right here. That's cool. You know, you can tape around there. That's not not a not an issue. So that's that's two ways to approach that tape joint. I I did it this way because I didn't know where this curve would start. So I wanted to give myself allowance. And uh, this this curve wound up not starting until I'm way past the upper deck of this. So yeah, you could run tape around there. And, uh, you know, it's all the same. Again, I'm thinking... <sighs> This this cable drive is is always going to be available, but I'm still thinking about using the drive system that was in that pro boat that used a three millimeter shaft here. You had to use three millimeter props, and then it had a U joint here and a straight shaft. It was a pretty short straight shaft in that boat, and with the motor location here for balance. I'd have to get a different shaft, but again, three millimeter shafts are easy to get there, a dime a dozen. So that's some thinking. This will always be available and will always work, so I'm kind of leaning towards this way to go, so we will see. So anyway, Big B and other builders of what used to be SPX, um, that's how I did that. I built this part first, set it on, built the shoebox lid second, and then glued them together, and then added this strip right there. And then, you know, this strip glued right up against this edge, and then I could round it a little bit and get this, this thing happening. So there you go. Oh, 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 yeah, one other thing. This, this little piece here, you want it at a bit of a positive angle. Hello, let me get into the tab. You want it at a bit of a positive angle here so that it acts like a, uh, a recovery step. You know, it'll, it'll help lift the bow out if it plows into water. So you see I've got a little bit of up on that. So there you go. I think that's everything I need to explain about this. Until next time, jet out.